In this video, we will evaluate the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent functions, and we will not use a calculator, but instead, we will use the unit circle. So here we have the unit circle, and as you see, it has angles in degrees and in radians. All these angles are positive because they are generated by a counterclockwise rotation. But if we would move clockwise, then we would have negative angles. On the unit circle, we have points that correspond to each angle. For example, the point that corresponds to the angle pi over 6 has the coordinates square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. The first coordinate of each point represents the value of cosine at the given angle, and the second coordinate represents the value of sine. For example, cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half, because this is the first coordinate of this point, and sine of 2 pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, because this is the second coordinate of this point. Now, what about the tangent function, and how do we evaluate it using the unit circle? To find the value of tangent at a certain angle, we need to divide the y-coordinate by the x-coordinate. For example, we can say that tangent of pi over 4 equals 1, because square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 equals 1. Now, in this video, we will be evaluating inverse trigonometric functions. This means that we are given the value of a trigonometric function, and we need to find the corresponding angle. For example, in the expression inverse sine of 1 half, 1 half represents the value of sine, and we need to find the angle whose sine is 1 half. If we look at the unit circle, we see two angles, whose sine is 1 half. The first one is pi over 6, and the value of sine is 1 half, and the other one is 5 pi over 6, and here the value of sine is also 1 half. So then, what is the answer? Pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6? To get the right answer, let's look at the properties of inverse sine functions. The domain of this function is any number from negative 1 to positive 1, and this means that this number that we are given here has to be a number from negative 1 to positive 1, otherwise the function would be undefined. Now, the range of the inverse sine function has to be an angle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So again, with the inverse sine function, whatever the answer is, it has to be an angle from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And as you see, this includes quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So then, which of these two angles is an angle that is in this range? That is pi over 6. Then we can say that inverse sine of 1 half is pi over 6. Now, let's see the next example. Here we have to evaluate inverse sine of negative square root of 2 over 2. On the unit circle, we see two angles whose sine is negative square root of 2 over 2, that is 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. But again, the angle has to be either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4. Therefore, 5 pi over 4 will not work. Now, what about 7 pi over 4? With inverse sine, if the angle is in quadrant 4, then it has to be negative, and that is because the range is from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. If on the unit circle, from 0, we move counterclockwise, then we will have the angles pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and so on. But if we would move clockwise, then the angles would be negative pi over 6, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 3, and so on. So then, in quadrant 4, the negative angle whose sine is negative square root of 2 over 2 will be negative pi over 4. Then we will write that inverse sine of negative square root of 2 over 2 is negative pi over 4. Now, let's talk about the inverse cosine functions. 
the domain is any number from negative 1 to positive 1 and the range is any angle from 0 to pi. And this means that the angles in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 are included in this interval. Now we have to evaluate inverse cosine of 0. If we look at the unit circle and the interval from 0 to pi, there is only one angle where the value of cosine is 0 and this angle is pi over 2. Then we will write that inverse cosine of 0 is pi over 2. Now, what about inverse cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2? On the unit circle, we see two angles whose cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2. That is 5 pi over 6, and here cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2, and the other one is 7 pi over 6, and again the cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2. Then out of these two angles, we will choose 5 pi over 6 because this angle is on the interval from 0 to pi. Then we will write that inverse cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2 is 5 pi over 6. And now let's talk about inverse tangent functions. The domain is any number from negative infinity to positive infinity and the range is any angle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Notice that above we used brackets and this means that the endpoints are included. However, on this interval the endpoints are not included. So when we evaluate inverse tangent functions, the angles that we get have to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And these open circles show that negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 are not included. And indeed, if we would use the unit circle to find tangent of pi over 2, then we would need to divide y by x. But 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Now let's evaluate inverse tangent of square root of 3. On the unit circle, notice that if we divide square root of 3 over 2 by 1 half, that will give us square root of 3. Also, if we divide negative square root of 3 over 2 by negative 1 half, that is also square root of 3. So then, we see two angles whose tangent is square root of 3. One of them is pi over 3 and the other one is 4 pi over 3. Then which one is the right answer? That would be pi over 3 because pi over 3 is in the range between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Then we will write that inverse tangent of square root of 3 is pi over 3. And now in the last example we need to evaluate inverse tangent of 1. In quadrant 1 we see that square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2 is 1 and in quadrant 3 negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2 is also 1. So again we have two angles pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 whose tangent is 1. Then the correct answer will be pi over 4 because this angle is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So here we have all the answers and we could also write them in degrees instead of radians. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment and thank you for watching.